Hey, hello, my children. We are back here for another Monday Night Raw review. And we, of course, have, of course, Heath Slater returning, probably to have one more reunion with the then and now WWE Champion after a pretty good promo. He had a good promo uh, enhancing his career, going over a shoot that, uh, you know, I have two girls, I don't have 22 kayfabe children to give me sympathy. This is for real, and I des and I now got fired without you helping. It was a good promo. Of course, Ziggler, of course, needs people that, of course, do better stuff than him. To, of course, go over a few that nobody actually cares about. And I was more entertained with the Lashley and McIntyre few that they could have kept until SummerSlam than this BS. That, of course, we just need different... Challenger for McIntyre. Why not? Then a former World Heavyweight Champion. And of course, it ended with a match that ended quickly because, of course, McIntyre is supposed to be pushed extremely strong that he is, and they're doing a well done job making sure this guy's legit. And Ziggler didn't even pick up his stipulation, so you have to wait to go home show. Come make sure you rules. So give you a reason to watch next week, even though there's no particular reasons why to watch next week. Even though they still give excuses to why we need more people in our brands, thanks we can't sell to, we can't we can't let any we can't make anybody watch with the guys that we make a specific brand for. That's why I hate these brands, these brand split invitationals, or we don't have any good ideas, so why not just mix up the roster to make sure we have inconsistency in hand, and we don't even have any prom that in depth storylines going into SmackDown or Raw. I give the promo much, but the match just ended quickly as soon as Heath Slater had the better. He looks better than uh, the last time he made his return on Raw. Uh, he, he had a time on SmackDown. He was just jobbing. And now, uh, here he is, looking okay. Until he got Claymore, as soon as he got separation from McIntyre for like a split second. So that wasn't much until... Uh, Ziggler came, disrespected him in some shit. That was practically it until McIntyre came into the way. They have a little three, three finger sign of, of course, three man ban. If you guys don't remember, one of the more memorable jobber factions of recent memory. Because I like their theme song, to be honest. And if you guys don't, it's okay. No one's gonna, no one's gonna, no one's gonna hurt you. Of course, we had a uh, Kyrie Sane returning. Over uh, foreshadowing of Asuka after after Bailey and, and Sasha walked off out of a promo trying to speak to the crowd, even though they're impromptu hired NXT crowds. So it feels completely robotic whenever they interact to a heel or a babyface. Well, they'll clap in the middle of a babyface, they'll boo in the middle of a heel. So there's like no dynamic or personality, even though these guys are literally had experience and have been fans of the product for like how long or at least been a wrestling been in a wrestling crowd before so I don't understand why can't you just be turn your brain off and make sure people they feel like this is a real crowd I don't know why they have to make it so robust to make sure we know who's a healer or babyface because you can tell by the tone or at least how they behave what a healer or babyface is I've always found it corny like, if you can make a hired crowd go ahead, but at least have make them, like, feel like they're actually watching the show. It ended up in, a saying, actually having a decent, uh, the best part was that big forearm smash from the outside, a running meteor off the apron. The match, like, went for, like, three commercial breaks. I didn't mind it, because we haven't seen Kyrie on, t uh, on television since she killed, wish it was killed by Nia Jax. And, uh, whatever, whatever. It was just an okay match. It was good to see Kyrie Sane on top and Asuka to get back her Kabuki Warrior buddy, even though there's been so many teases of her career ending up short because, of course, she got married. She, of course, has so many injuries in hand by a reckless wrestler and all the stuff that they have going for her since she's uh, been uh, on IR for a bit. So it's just been rough to... I've been hearing all these rumors, and I can't just be believing things off the dirt sheet. Next up, we of course had the KO show that had Seth Rollins going over it. And Rey Mysterio, after winning a tag team match involving, uh, I mean, last week, uh, he got to pick up the stipulation. It was an eye for an eye match. Now, there was this uh, 
this was this was a funny tweet by J Chris Jericho that of course if you guys don't watch AEW Dynamite it's on on TNT. I don't uh, on Wednesdays, like months before when Moxley before Moxley won the world title he was feuding with the Inner Circle, and he stabbed Santana's eye out while Jericho stabbed his eye out a few weeks prior. Uh, they had an eye for an eye match. Well, not really an eye for an eye match. It was just both guys had one eye now, so they wrestled because of that reason. So, yeah. Rey Mysterio is being messed up, I guess, for a specific thing. I don't know why they couldn't just make it, like, Dominic and Mysterio versus him and probably Murphy, because I haven't seen Austin in a while. Because Austin literally had no point to even being in the main roster. Because the other guy, other than his look, uh, he he looks good. The guy just has, hasn't any personality. And he has the most generic move set of all time. He'll do a drop kick, clothesline. He'll take a few bumps and then he'll do this TKO finish. He only picked up like a few wins when he was with Andrade and Garza. And then he just went out the deep end. It was supposed to give him more exposure when he was in the faction with Rollins. And I was like, where the hell's the authors of pain and all that crap? It just feels like they're just doing this for the sake of doing this so they can have some bodies on the roster. Thanks to the immediate firing or an impact's turn, the lottery. In the aspect of picking so much mid-card fodder that it's enough for them to excuse getting rid of Brian Cage, Karrion Cross. Scarlet and the biggest star that they currently have on Impact right now took the previous World Heavyweight title and Eddie Edwards that's now fat. So, <clears throat> chances on any of that actually succeeding to get some ratings for Access TV has more thing has bigger chances than than New Japan Pro Wrestling going mainstream in the United States. I'm just saying. That's just my opinion. Uh, Kevin, Owens, Kevin Owens did tag with Mysterio uh, against Murphy and Rollins in an okay match. It did end up with a stunner. Clothesline, clothesline. Uh, they did do back and forth. I didn't care about the promo, what happened to KO show. It, of course, had to deal with Rey Mysterio saying, You mess with my child. Me, a familia. And Kevin Owens just is a better promo whenever he's a heel. I don't care about his promo he did on Shane. Anybody else could have done that promo because of the way Shane was running things on SmackDown from back in the day. I don't give a crap. That's how it was. I don't care. It, it just felt so mediocre the way Kevin Owens lashes out his promos because you know he plays a dislikable douchebag that of course beats the crap out of anybody to get ahead so I don't know why they don't they just just made that just let that character rise because they try to do that same crap months prior and it's obvious Kevin Owens is more more over when he's a heel it worked when he was with Jericho, it worked when he was a singles guy, when he was with, uh, when he was beating John Cena. And he had, he just had better and entertaining matches, so I don't care. It, it just had drop kicks, running cannonball sentons, and I didn't care. Same match, Hurricane Rana's no, no source of entertainment, because of course they were trying to make this a quick match. It ended up with a double 619. The match was fine, the promo was eh. I couldn't care. Next up, we of course had Bobby Lashley and MVP that did feud off with Cedric Alexander and Ricochet after a backstage segment and after the previous murdering of uh, Apollo Crews, it ended up in a weird match. And somehow just introducing a new design for the United States Championship to, I guess, personalize it for MVP, or this is Vince, Vince McMahon's doing. Even though Vince McMahon, uh, MVP always looked better with the United States Championship, the previous design. And it kind of uh, was literally his best his best work when he was on, when he was on SmackDown. He comes around 
hoisting that thing, and then he dressed in the suit. Come and and Cedric and and Ricochet fucking butt buddies because Ricochet likes touching other men's asses now. Coming around, you say, "Look at the prestige of that belt," and the prestige of that belt died. It just looks terrible. And I thought the prestige of the belt died when it was on Apollo Cruz, and they tried it so hard that the guy only had one defense on pay per view, and it wasn't even fully on pay per view. It was on kickoff. So they know they have no reliance on the guy just to push him out of injury again, like they did when he won Money in the Bank. I mean, won a Money in the Bank qualifiers. Then, then tweaked his ankle when he thought of challenging Andrade for the first time for the U.S. title. Why do they keep doing this? What's the consistency here? Other than try to manage heat for MVP. And then use Lashley for the muscle? How come he's not trying to be like, I should be the one trying to get another shot for the WWE Championship? If it wasn't for my wife getting in the way, bloody bloody blah, blah, blah. That's pushed for a rematch for next for the next pay-per-view. Not fucking Dolph Ziggler on pay-per-view. And the whole crowd is gonna be around. I don't understand. I guess they're saving the rematch for later. Uh, hopefully. I just it's just so dumb. It ended up obviously with Lashley and MVP picking up the dub. I, I could care less, folks. I, I could care less. It ended off the vice grip after after a spear for the win. Oh, 350, Lariats. I think there was no sling blade, but I thought it was. Double drop kick. MVP was quartered, plus he wasn't in ring gear, so we tagged in Lashley for a majority of it. I don't care. They're trying to do this minuscule feud with Ricochet that's been downgraded to challenging Brock Lesnar for the world title to fingering his ass and tagging with another guy that was supposed to be top of the mid-card by now. And now they're part of this minuscule tag team. They only pick, And then they lose to some guy's name. Uh, Brian Vinks? In uh, the guy who used to tag with this other guy from NXT, and I was in New Japan. Uh, I don't care. It, it, they just fell off immediately. They used to be on TV consistently for the last three weeks, and I liked their matches because of their high fly chemistry, and then they started losing. Viking Raiders tag with the big show against Randy Orton, Andrade, and Garza. I didn't mind their promos at all. Uh,. They may they keep degrading the Raiders like we are ready for the raid, but we act silly and shit. It just just depletes like any reason to treat these guys as badasses. I'm not saying that you guys can't do comedic moments, but do it in a better timing. Big Show always been like the butt of all jokes, and we try to just still treat him like he's one of the most intimidating dudes on the roster. And then you forgot he played the New Year's baby. Viking Raiders did this several, like over month rivalry, if you want to call it that, with the uh, whatever we can do, you can do better challenge that they keep polarizing is the most entertaining parts of Raw. It, it wasn't. It was court. It was courting with the same little joke of all time, and it's so crap. It didn't even end up in a finishing match on pay per view, and no tension even rise. Then they made something called the Viking Profits. It was so retarded. At least Randy Orton being like, hey, I'm in this for myself. I respect you guys enough that you guys are generational talents. And that's about it. Never get in my way what I'm going to do with my arrival. That's it. Why can't we do shit like that? There's no tension. And all the storylining's in the way because Edge wanted to act like a retard and injure himself in his first actual legit match he had in years. So I'm just saying. The, the match was, oh, God. Okay, my head's about to hurt. Cheap shots over to the corner whenever the ref was on right. What well, was focusing on whatever the picture was trying to interfere when he's not even a legal man. A uh, big devastating European uppercuts off Randy Orton. Uh, elevated DET, I think, on one half of the Viking Raiders. A uh, good sneak into a freaking knee. Like, Eric, he's just. Ibar's the athletic fat dude, and. I mean, no, that's Ibar. 
Eric is just a guy who just does devastating bicycle knees to the face. That's basically the thing. There was, uh, of course, uh, a double a double stand uh, car, a cartwheel for no reason. He didn't even like attempt to like something like a clothesline or anything. A KO punch nearly sufficed. An RKO on Ibar for the win. Uh, on Eric, Randy picked up the win. Well, Big Show, of course, pissed off because he was taken out the taken out the ring. And they did good cancelizations of the Viking experience. It was an okay match. Forgettable for probably what, what are they gonna do? Like a chair match at Extreme Rules? No way, it's not a TLC yet because of course TLC is just for the most generic PG way to do any type of violent feud. So they're probably gonna just do a street, uh, uh, like a street fight or a steel cage match, whatever the hell they're gonna try. <clears throat> Next up, we had Billy Kay against Ruby Riot, and they still teased the factoid that Liv Morgan is trying to tease reuniting after literally having uh, leadership issues with Ruby Riot, and plus Sarah Logan's out, so probably they're trying to do a cheap reunion with, of course, Ruby Riot and <clears throat> Liv Morgan after literally having a several week feud that ended up with Liv Morgan, uh, Ruby Riot losing every freaking match that she had. So what was the point of doing this with the Iconics? You pin, you got pinned against one half, and then you get pinned against the other one? What she do with that turnbuckle move, a drop kick thing, and then she loses off some kind of dumb, uh, Falcon Arrow? The match ended as quicker as me getting ghosted. It's that sad. It's no, no one cares. Ruby Wright is consistently tacked away as a jobber, and she looks like any girl that you probably got stood up on in a hot topic. I hate the way she looks, and she gets jobbed out for the fact that for her minuscule wrestling ability and her boring way of just copying out promos. When the hell is she like a baby face? All because we sympathize that she consistently she consistently loses. To probably the worst female tag team in the roster. No one cares. Lay Cool is more watchable than, than the Iconics. And people just watch the Iconics so they can masturbate to Peyton Royce. It's just, uh, poor. The match was mediocre. No one can, anybody could care less that, uh, a bow and arrow submission was taken down, but it ended off with a weak ass spine buster. For the win. Like, are you serious? Why isn't she just on main event or something? Why are we watching this feud that no one cares about? Bailey versus Oscar was the main event for a champion versus champion match. Other than the invitational playing playing a factoid. Listen, I like when it first smacked you on a raw collides. But they usually do this in anniversary specials or at least when the draft. Is here, so they can do something like the Slammies, they can do something like probably an anniversary or a history breaking moment, or probably a passing alumni or passing wrestler. I don't mind that. I mind when they keep trying to force fact or it's to feel like Raw and SmackDown is so unique, but we keep forcing different gimmicks and we keep changing it every time because we're not dedicated to shit. Like, completely, Raw, 2019 is different from 2020 in so many goddamn ways, ways that you feel like you'd rather watch 2017 SmackDown. It, it's so poor. And I hate watching these munchkin stuff face cabbage patch, auntie face ass, women, transgender people that continue to be on SmackDown, Raw, and NXT. And I guess their long reigns is supposed to prestigious and send heat over for their character when no one cares. Someone please, and I'm begging you, please, get Bailey into a hair, sal ha a hair salon, please. Get gas masks, get some shit to keep herself safe so she can please wear, uh, look a bit more, you know, appealing to the eye. I'm not saying they're attractive, There's nothing that attractive into, into Bailey other than she got a fatter ass and... Sasha, that's where anybody else say it. Don't take it from me. It's just, and she had this mediocre match with Oscar. Drop kicks, drop kicks, 
uh, a running knee, a bit of assistance off Kyrie saying vertical suplex. She got taken out of the ring. She was talking to the commentary all the time. It just I, I had no reason to insect myself into the match because oh yeah, this was the main event. Cool. Like a cheap near fall into the match. A corner spot where, of course, she mocks her hugger running running spear to the corner spot. It, it just felt like this could have been any other match from any other show, and it could have been nothing. Like, this had no prestige, and this had no reason to exist. Like, you take it like we haven't done frequent champion versus champion matches already, and this had no reason to be important. At all, because these guys are like already multi champions, and they frequently come to SmackDown or Raw for for multiple reasons. So I don't get, I don't care. That's how I feel on it. If you guys, that's at least Rob was a bit more watchable than last week. That's all I could say. Other than uh, the Akira Tazawa and our true crap, though, like no power struggle, no storylines at all. That of course make sure that Raw or Smack Raw feels important to watch. I don't really care that Ziggler feuds with McIntyre, and where was the where was the dominant showcase of of course Natalia and Lana over the last coming weeks? Thanks to Pin Liv Morgan, I don't get it. It's dumb. This is a dumb episode of Raw. Thought differently, please comment below. I don't mind listening to anybody's opinion, negative or not. I would love to hear what you guys uh, say in the comment section. You guys have a voice. Thanks for watching. Like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you on the next review.